Everybody's wrong. Rewrote the song. Thoughts become action. Tell me what's happening. Wish your mind wrapped in a wrapped around. Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be using the 3D tool within Adobe Illustrator to create these 3D striped shapes. So one that we're going to work on is going to be a sphere or like a globe sort of shape and the other shape is going to be more like a donut sort of shape. And very quickly before we get into the video, I just want to remind you to go and check out my new font, Monoline Script. There'll be a link to that in the description down below. And yeah, let's get into the video. Okay, so first you want to make a document and this one's just 2000 by 2000, so it's just a square. And what we're first going to do is come over to these shapes and make sure we have the rectangle tool selected. And I'm just going to create a fairly short rectangle. I'm going to take the fill off and then replace it so it's black. And let me just zoom into this a little bit, make it a tad smaller. And all I'm going to do from here is holding Alt and Shift, just click and drag, and you'll see that it now duplicates. And then what you're going to do is just hit Command D numerous times so I'm gonna do I'm just gonna hold it down so we get quite a few different right, there we go. Let me just delete maybe one or two of these. Okay, so now that you have this you're going to come up to window at the top and where it says symbols you're just gonna click this if you've not already got it open in your tabs over on the right, which I didn't. So once you have these symbols tab open, I'm just gonna I can't make it any bigger. So what you're going to do is highlight these, all of these, and just simply click and drag into the Symbols tab, and then just hit OK. And now we can just move this off the document while we work on the actual shape. So first we'll do the donut shape, and to do this, all you're going to do is come over to your Shape tool, come down to the Ellipse tool, whoops, don't know why I did that. You just select the Ellipse tool, and then holding Shift and Alt, you can create it from the center rather than it just coming out from one side. So we're just going to create a circle about this size and just going to make it a lighter colour just so we can see what we're doing with the lines that we made. So with this shape selected, all you're going to do is come up to Effect, 3D and then Revolve. And once this dialog box is open, you're just going to hit Preview and I can see it's kind of gone like a donut shape but the hole in the middle is not really visible. So to get that more visible, we're just going to turn this shape. So you can do, all you can do is just click and drag on either side and adjust the angle of this. And then where it says offset down here, this will actually adjust the size of the, the donut shape and the hole in the center. So if you bring this up to, you want to have a fairly decent sized hole in the middle. You don't want it to be really tight like that, otherwise it'll look a bit silly. So just drop this down to a reasonable size. So that looks all right. And I want it on a bit more of an angle. So maybe like that, that looks fine to me. And then you're going to come over to map art, which is at the bottom here, hit that and then come up to where it says symbol and then you'll be able to see that your new um, symbol which you added a minute ago will be at the bottom just under new symbol. So I'm just going to hit that and now you can see it sort of tries to fill this area. So rather than just stretching it, all I'm going to do is hit scale to fit and now you can see it, it kind of fills this. But what you can notice is here, it kind of joins two of them together. So all I'm going to do is just drag this out a little bit to about there and now you can see that fixes that's now the space in between all of these is now completely even and then what you're going to do is where it says invisible geometry at the bottom make sure you have this ticked and now you can see it gets rid of the actual donut shape and leaves you with just the lines so once you've done that just hit ok hit ok again and then once you're left with this you're going to come to object expand appearance and then you're just going to right click ungroup right click again ungroup right click again release clipping mask now you can deselect it and all you're going to do is click on the back piece so you know it's quite hard to see what you're doing but see how like the thin one here is like at the back that's what you're going to click on and you'll see it selects like a nice chunk of them and you can just hit backspace and delete that again with these bits you're not going to need that so delete that then these little parts here you're not going to need those so delete those and I know at first it looks a bit confusing because it's like which part do I actually delete but once you delete one or two pieces you'll start you'll just start to see what you actually have to get rid of so now you're left with this cool shape so you can just keep this black and white if you want and it's uh, sorry let me just group that so as you can see you've got all these random sort of lines on the inside and if you look at the bottom here you can't just select the color so if I try to fill that it simply does this and obviously that's not what you want so from here, all we're going to do is come in 
And if you have it all highlighted, see all these lines where it kind of goes over everything? You need to click onto these and then release them from the compound path, then you can delete that shape. So I'll show you what I mean. So if I'm just here where there's no shape and you come across, you'll see that it actually hits this path. Now you need to, sorry, I group that actually, so don't group it. So now you just basically have to click on that, delete it. And then if it's still there, just click again, delete, backspace. And again here, you can see it does it. So delete and delete. So you basically just got to go through and delete all these. And if you're wondering where they are, if you can't see where they all are, all you have to do is just highlight the whole thing and then you'll be able to see where these full lines are. It's so like these ones here where it's like split in half, you can just ignore those. It's the ones where it's the full line sort of over, over the top of everything. So if you click, delete, see where the next one is. So we've got some down here, delete, delete. All right, let's double check. Right, so we've got a few more. It's quite a tedious process, but if you want to keep it black and white, then you don't even have to do this. Or you can just select the color before you actually come to this part of it. So that looks like we've got everything. And the way you can tell if you've got it all is if you look at the color palette at the bottom here, you'll see that it's now an actual color. So now if I just click this, I can make this whole shape whatever color I want to. Now, these are actually separate shapes because of the way that it's made. So sometimes if you come down to the Pathfinder tab here and then where it says Shape Modes and then come to Unite, sometimes if you press that, it will get rid of all of it and it will just merge it, but sometimes it won't. And if it doesn't, all you need to do is come to the Shape Builder tool here and where the line was like split, just simply click and drag like that over the line and it will merge the shapes together. But if you get lucky and it does what I've what it's just done with me, then it should be, too, should be fine. And from here, what you can actually do is add a gradient. So luckily because of the way the shape is and these are all being colored separately and not as, not as one big shape it actually creates it actually helps with this sort of 3D kind of look but let me just give you an example of if it was all one shape and if you wanted this all to be one one solid gradient color I'll show you how you can do that so I'm just going to duplicate that by holding alt and shift and then dragging so now I've got another copy here and if I wanted this to be one full shape, oh, and so basically you have to create a compound path. So I'm just going to hit Command 8. And now as you can see, it's one full shape. So the gradient goes from all the way on this side to the left. So you can see these are two, these are both using the same gradient, but one's a compound path and one's all individual shapes. So you can get different effects from that. And basically that's how you create this effect. And you can delete the front ones and leave the back shapes. So the the sort of donut would be facing the other direction. It's completely up to you and there's a lot you can actually do with this. So I'll leave that to you guys to explore with that. And now we're gonna go with the sort of globe effect. And to do that, we're going to have to recreate one of these. So I'm just simply gonna, let me just show you how to do that. With nothing selected, sorry, holding shift and alt, just click and drag and that'll duplicate. And because this is now a symbol, we're just gonna right click and break link to symbol. And I'm just gonna delete most of these so we only want a few remaining and that looks all right let's just have it horizontal this time as well right okay so now you've got this shape we're just going to drag this into the symbols tab as well hit okay drag this over here so it's off the canvas and now we're going to get the ellipse tool again create a full circle holding alt and shift and then hitting C on the keyboard will now allow you to cut the shape. So we're just going to do the top anchor point and the bottom anchor point and then hit backspace twice, which will leave you with half a circle. Now that you have half a circle, I'm just going to put it as a different color so you can see what we're doing. And then again, come up to the top effect 3D revolve and then hit preview. And now you can see it's made this sphere sort of shape for you. And from here, you're going to again come down to map art and then where it says uh, symbol at the top, you're going to come down to your newest symbol, which was the couple of lines that we made, and scale to fit. And now you can hit the invisible geometry, and you can see that it kind of creates this 3D globe sort of shape. So you're just going to hit OK again, hit OK again, and then object, expand appearance, and then right click, ungroup, ungroup again, and then release clipping mask. So now if we click, you'll see that you have the top and the bottom. So they're basically up, upside down for copies of themselves. So this one will be on the top and this one will be on the bottom. So what you could what you could do really is simply just delete that if you didn't want it and just keep this shape. 
or what you can do is make it look 3D. So let's add, let's make this a lighter gray color. And I'm gonna drag this back on top. And now you can see it has like a, it's created like a 3D sort of shape. So that's how you can create the sort of globe kind of shape. I mean, you can do it diagonally, you can do it horizontally or vertically. Again, with these, you can do the, like, so these lines here, you could uh, simply go like this, get the, what's it called, free transform tool, and you could just click and drag with that if you wanted. Oops, that lagged a little bit. Yeah, so you could have it however you want, really, and just repeat the process that we've just done to create this. So let me just drag this back in here. So yeah, these are basically the results that you're gonna get from these two processes. I mean, there's plenty more things you can do with these. Instead of just having lines going one way, you could create like a letter Z, for example, or a letter S or a letter T. You could just do any sort of shape and then apply it to this sort of method and you'll get these kind of results, but with that shape, of course. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I hope this tutorial has helped you. I'm sure that some of the shortcuts and things within the process of creating this might come of help to some people anyway. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see where you can incorporate this into designs. And as always, if you d if you decide to post anything on social media using these tutorials, then feel free to uh, tag me in it. I'd love to see the work that people create using my tutorials. It's always great to see. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.